What's going on guys, Flynn Masters coming at you with a new video, and today we'll be ranking all 19 seasons of Hell's Kitchen. Now this was the first reality TV show I ever watched, and to this day I still keep up on, and with season 20 coming up, a big milestone in the show's history obviously, I figured it would be a good time to look back on all 19 seasons of the show and rank them from worst to best. Now I don't have any particular criteria in ranking these seasons, but I will be looking at things like memorable moments, the cast, the predictability, and just the general flow of the season to determine my overall enjoyment. With that said, let's get this list started with number 19, and this season will always be the worst season of Hell's Kitchen in my opinion, and that is Hell's Kitchen Season 9. And this season will just always be unwatchable to me, I mean there's just so many disgusting personalities this season. And of course, you have the worst of them all in Elise. And the thing with Elise is, she was put up so many times for elimination this season. But unlike most other times in Hell's Kitchen history when a chef is put up over and over again due to them just simply being a bad personality on the team, she legit had a bad performance in pretty much every one of her services and was definitely warranted to go home, especially during the last couple of rounds. Jennifer's elimination is still complete BS, as she was eliminated for not fighting back when she was literally screaming at Elise on multiple occasions. And I'm sorry guys, but Will or Paul don't do it for me either. They were just both super cringy. I'm all for passion, but them going crazy over the tiniest of mistakes got so old after a while. And then both of them going on to say Elise deserved to stay over Jennifer is just so ridiculous. Tommy was a bright spot this season, but overall, there's just so many bad personalities, with the worst of them all lasting the entire season. So for me, it gets the title of Worst Hell's Kitchen Season. Now coming in at number 18, the second worst season of Hell's Kitchen in my opinion, is Hell's Kitchen Season 13. This is easily the most forgettable season ever, and I think the massive drop in ratings from Season 12 showed just how uninteresting it was. I legit think there was a 5 episode stretch this season where literally the only dishes that were messed up were risotto and scallops, making the services so uninteresting. I mean, it got to the point to where you knew whoever was working fish that night would probably be the one going home. And other than Sterling, the characters were super bland as well. I could not tell you one thing about Jennifer or Sade, who made it all the way to the final four. I also think Ashley's extremely unfair elimination was the start of an era of really dumb eliminations for Ramsey, eliminating people just for the shock factor. And in general, this season just felt different. The setup of the restaurant was different, the narrator was different, and it just didn't feel like Hell's Kitchen to me. Latasha is a great and fun winner, and obviously Sterling is iconic, but being bored watching Hell's Kitchen is not a good thing, and that's how I felt watching this entire season. So it lands here at number 18. Now coming in here at number 17 is the 17th season of the show, and that is Hell's Kitchen All-Stars. I remember being so hyped for this season, as I always wondered what a returning player season would be like in Hell's Kitchen, but this season proved that it's hopefully a one and done. Similar to season 13, there just wasn't a lot going on during services, since these were all good cooks and there wasn't any massive mistakes. But again, since they were two time players and all stars, this was to be expected. Because of this, we got two Cook for Your Life challenges resulting in three eliminations, with Giovanni being a complete BS elimination. How can we forget about Van's ridiculously unfair elimination? And to top it all off, we get the ridiculous final three twist only for Nick, the obvious deserving winner of the season, to be eliminated by some random chef. And worst of all, we had to deal with more of Elisa's attitude for pretty much the entire season. We did have the memorable moment of Josh getting kicked out during service, as he just simply didn't belong with the other All-Stars this season, and it was fun to see players like Van, Giovanni, Millie, and Ben all return. But there was simply too many unfair eliminations this season in order to keep the drama-filled players around. And with the lack of memorable moments, this was such a massive disappointment of a season, so it lands here at number 17. Coming in at number 16 is the OG season, Hell's Kitchen Season 1. There's just really not much to say about this season since it was so new, and Ramsey production was just finding its footing. But the quality is noticeably bad, and even though Ramsey was nothing like anyone had ever seen on TV before, he really didn't take off until Season 2. And even though this is the original cast, the players this season just simply aren't as iconic as the players in Season 2 and 3. Overall, you can't really hate on this season too much, but all things considered, it's still not that great. So lands here at number 16. Coming in at number 15 is the longest season in Hell's Kitchen history, and that is of course Hell's Kitchen Season 11. I don't necessarily mind the 20 chefs aspect, it's more of the fact that there's so many non-elimination episodes. And that is the main problem with this season. It's so unnecessarily long. And the season really drags on because of it. And the main story of the season is the annihilation of the blue team, 
with John ultimately being the last man standing at the final five with a bunch of women. But in three of the next five seasons, we saw Bryant, Jason, and Polly also be the last man standing with a bunch of women. And I'd argue the season 16 blue team was way worse than the season 11 blue team. So this entire storyline just doesn't hold up. There's some good characters such as John and Anthony. Ray was feisty for an older guy. Mary had a good underdog story as a runner-up. But there's also some big duds as well like Jacqueline, Amanda, Michael, and also just your classic annoying players such as Nedra and Dan. The first service is probably one of my all-time favorite services as it lasted for basically an entire episode and saw 12 chefs get kicked out. But overall, this season was way too long with an uninteresting storyline arc and Janelle is an incredibly unmemorable winner. So for me, season 11 is a bottom 5 season, landing here at 15. Coming in at number 14 is another season that suffers from being way too stretched out, and that is Hell's Kitchen season 10. The beginning of this season is great, with some of the best services of all time, with Ramsey kicking out one person after another, as I prefer these type of services as opposed to just kicking out the whole team at one time. But there's three episodes this season that was just based purely around the challenge, with no service or elimination. And these episodes just feel so unnecessary. I get that they were trying to build up more characters this season, but it just didn't work for me. Especially when the focus is on all the bitchiness going on in the red team with Robin, Barbie, and Tiffany. This season did produce the iconic Christina Wilson, who while I think is a bit overrated, she's definitely one of the faces of the Hell's Kitchen franchise. And her versus Justin is one of the best final twos of all time. And the eliminations were fun as well, with the chefs going off on their team while fighting for their lives to stay, which I can respect. So overall, this season should be a lot higher, as there are fun moments, services, with an iconic final two. But this season was super dragged out, and produces some of the most unlikable chefs in Hell's Kitchen history, so it lands here at number 14. Now coming in at number 13 is what I like to call the Survivor Gabon version of Hell's Kitchen, and that is Hell's Kitchen Season 8. And just like Survivor Gabon, there's so many bad chefs this season who make it so much farther than they should. Raj making it past two eliminations is ridiculous, Trev and Sabrina making it to Black Jackets is insulting, and Nona is in my, and many other people's opinion, the worst winner in the show's history. But as funny as this train wreck season is, it's also sad to see people like Curtis, Louie, and Vinny be unfairly eliminated in order to keep these chefs around. And then of course you have Russell who was possibly the biggest douche to ever step foot in Hell's Kitchen. And it sucks that he was the most skilled chef there, as you wanted to see him screw up. And Ramsey obviously was forced to choose a weak winner in Nona to keep the fans happy. This is a fun season to watch if you just want to watch a bunch of bad chefs, but other than that, there's really not much this season has to offer other than being a complete train wreck. So it lands here at number 13. Now at number 12 is a unanimously hated season, but to me it's not completely terrible and that is Hell's Kitchen Season 16. This season has probably the most obvious winner to date, as Ryan had all the personal stories and was on the dominating red team, while Heather's story was her showmance with Andrew. While Matt was an asshole, he did give us the one-on-one -on -one confrontation with Ramsey in Episode 1, something we hadn't seen in a while. Polly was a rootable underdog villain, and there were so many satisfying illuminations this season, such as Johnny, Coop, Matt, Gina, and Andrew. And this season has some of the most underrated characters in Hell's Kitchen history in my opinion, such as Devin and Shayna. The sexism this season is ugly at times, and the talent on the red and blue team was super imbalanced. But it's fun to see the villains this season be eliminated early as opposed to the heroes. And there's also some underrated chefs and fun moments. So for me, season 16 is good enough for number 12. Now coming in at number 11 is a season that I think gets a bit overlooked due to where it's at in Hell's Kitchen history and that is Hell's Kitchen Season 4. I think people really downplayed this season since it's not as nostalgic as Seasons 2 and 3, but it's also not as entertaining as Seasons 5, 6, and 7. But I still think it's a pretty good season. Jason was a terrible human being, but it was so funny to see him be so horrifically bad in each of the three services, and be one of the few chefs in history to be eliminated while working the desserts. You have some of the most lovable chefs in Hell's Kitchen history in Petroza, Bobby, and Luras, and while there wasn't any super memorable moments, this season had a good flow throughout, with a very unpredictable finish. Christina winning over Petroza, for better or for worse, really set the stage for what Ramsey looks for in a winner, and she's really the first ever surprising winner. You also have the Matt and Ben dynamic, which was very fun to watch play out, Ramsey starting to break his own rules when he eliminated Sharon, and this season gave us the worst signature dishes in Hell's Kitchen history. So overall, there's nothing super bad about this season other than people like Jen, Jason, and Petroza not winning. But there's also nothing super great either. It's just an average season, so it lands here at number 11. 
Coming in at number 10 is another old school season. In fact, it's the season right before season 4, Hell's Kitchen Season 3. This season, along with a lot of other old school seasons we'll be talking about, is peak Gordon Ramsay, showing off his insults to the world. This season also gave us an iconic cast, with Rock being one of the all-time greats to ever step foot in Hell's Kitchen, Bonnie was Hell's Kitchen's first ever sweetheart, Julia was the first truly rootable underdog, and even Aaron was super memorable for being an early boot. Even the annoying players like Tiffany ends up being the first boot when she's blindsided by Melissa at the first nomination, and Vinny gets his ass handed to him on multiple occasions by Ramsey, and it's all just so raw. And of course, you have the first ever rejection in Hell's Kitchen history, with Josh just completely screwing up on appetizers, and Ramsey just losing his marbles when kicking him out. And I think this moment, more than any other moment in the first couple of seasons, truly showed the type of things that Ramsey could do. This season I do think suffers from its shortened frame, as obviously 12 chefs is just too little time to character build, making a lot of the rounds predictable, and there just was not enough time for great moments left and right, other than obviously Josh's ejection. But the cast and peak Ramsey is what makes this season enjoyable for what it is, so I have it here as a middle tier season of Hell's Kitchen. Now coming in at number 9 is the second season consisting of returning players, but this season is obviously much better, and that is Hell's Kitchen Season 18, Rookies vs. Veterans. I'll give the season credit, coming after the failure that was All-Stars, I didn't think this season had a chance. The returning chefs were really random, as you had some of the best to never win in T, Kevin, and Heather, mixed with some really what the F picks like Trev and Brett, and I mean, obviously Brett got injured, but still, he wasn't proven like most of the other chefs. But this season really surprised me as I didn't think the new chefs stood a chance, but they really went toe to toe with some really talented veterans. It was crazy and fun to see people like T and Kevin go so early when I thought they were pretty much guaranteed black jackets. I thought Trev would be an early boot similar to Ben from All Stars to protect the bigger names, but he ended up being a massive character this season, leading the cast in confessionals during his time and was far better to watch this go around as opposed to his original season. The rookie chefs like Gizzy, Kane, and Mia really impressed me, and it was fun to watch them throughout the season. You also have the iconic Jen ejection where she blames Ramsey for sabotaging her. But similar to 17, a little too reliant on eliminations via challenges, and I really hated the fact that Mata waited all the way up to the final four to throw in the towel. So again, nothing too crazy moment-wise this season besides the Jen ejection, but the competitiveness and the shocking boot order is really what makes this season great. And it lands here at number 9. Now at number 8, and I know a lot of people are not going to agree with me on this, as I know a lot of people even have this season as the worst season of Hell's Kitchen, and it's pretty much unanimously considered a bad season, but I've always really enjoyed this season, and that is Hell's Kitchen Season 15. I think the reason why a lot of people don't like 15 is because it's so different. But that's exactly what makes this season great in my eyes. The winner of the season, Ariel, was a villain who wasn't exactly perfect throughout the season. I mean, she was nearly the second person to be eliminated. Never in a million years did I expect her to be the winner. Even up until the finale, I thought no way it could be her. But it was, much to my shock and the annoyance of the fan base. But the thing that makes this season so good to me is the unpredictability in this season. By the final seven, Every chef had been put up for elimination at least one time. I know this is what makes people sour on the season, but to me, it made the season so great because I literally had no idea who the winner would be, something that very rarely happens during a Hell's Kitchen watch. I mean, a perfect example of me enjoying this season as opposed to others is Hassan's elimination, as this is considered one of the most unfair eliminations ever. But in my view, you need to look at who he was up against. Chad, Jared, and Danny had never been up for a nomination at that point either, and they had all shown signs of talent, and Ramsey had literally no other choice but to choose Hassan, as he had the weakest service. I mean, it's crazy how unfortunate it was for a guy like Hassan to be eliminated so early, but that's just a perfect example of just how insane this season is. Now, the beginning is somewhat slow, and even the big moments this season like Joe and Kevin's elimination didn't hit as hard as they had in previous seasons. And the cast is an overall mixed bag, but this is without question the most unpredictable season of Hell's Kitchen ever, and I respect the fact that it led to a shocking villain winner. So for me, this is a solid season of Hell's Kitchen, and a lands here at number 8. Now at number 7, we have what I and many other people think is the most talented group of chefs to ever be casted. We have Hell's Kitchen Season 14. Now up front, I'm a fan of angry Gordon Ramsay, and seeing him rage at chefs messing up and overall bad dinner services. 
That's what made me fall in love with the show at such a young age. But you have to give credit where credit's due and recognize the talent this season. Michelle, Millie, Nick, Allison, Randy, even chefs like Josh, Christine, and Sarah all showed off their skills this season. And of course we have the best final two of all time in Megan and T, with Megan ultimately taking the crown as the goat of Hell's Kitchen. And best of all, these chefs were not only talented, but they were also likable as well. But at the same time, they knew when to turn on chef mode and be super competitive. There's no big crazy moments or twists this season, it's just simply a talented group of chefs duking it out. And even for someone like me, I can absolutely dig that. Coming in at number 6 is what I consider the true OG season of the show, and that is Hell's Kitchen Season 2. This is really what started it all, and gave Ramsay the fame as a chef icon. And to me, this is really the season that set the stage for future Hell's Kitchen. We got the first ever male and female villains in Tom and Sarah respectively. We got so many lovable and memorable characters like Rachel, Keith, and Heather. We had iconic services such as the episode 4 service where both teams lost for the first time ever, and the whole Final Four debacle with Virginia's safety. And we got the first real holy shit moment in history with Keith's elimination. And yes, while he did deserve to be in the finale, it really showed what Ramsey was looking for in head chefs. And there was more that went into his eliminations than what meets the eye. And you know, when I think of the Mount Rushmore of winners, I think of Heather over Michael. When I think of all-time terrible chefs, I think of Polly over Carolyn. You know, like, this season is what I think about when it comes to how it shaped the show. In the end, this season gave us so many great moments in chefs, and Ramsey really became the icon that he is today. So while it may not be as entertaining nowadays, you have to give season 2 points for what it meant to the franchise. So for me, it lands here at number 6. Now onto the top 5, and to start out, we have the most recent season of the show, Hell's Kitchen Season 19. After two seasons in a row consisting of returning players, Hell's Kitchen went back to its roots with one of the most likable casts in history. And that's exactly what makes this season great. Nobody was here to cause trouble or was seriously annoying, maybe aside from like Mark, but even then, there's been far, far, far worse personalities in Hell's Kitchen. Everyone aside from a couple had serious talent and wanted it just as bad as anyone, and this was such a breath of fresh air. Declan, Cody, Mary Lou, and Nikki were all fantastic chefs and characters, along with Corey being a great and unpredictable winner. You have something that I've been waiting for for the entire show's run, with Kenneth being eliminated due to having the worst signature dish, which really starts the season off with a bang. And the season really never slows down after that. The only bad parts of this season is the previous bad stuff we had already seen, such as keeping in Mark over Adam for more drama, and the return of the ridiculous Final 3 twist, screwing over Declan. And there is once again two challenge eliminations this season, but I was expecting it this season, and it's not as unfair as it is during a returning player season, but it was still annoying nonetheless. You could say this is pretty much the same type of season as season 14, with all the likability and talent, but what makes this season better for me is the unpredictability. It was pretty obvious Megan was unstoppable in 14, while it was a three horse race between Cody, Mary Lou, and Corey all season in 19, making for an exciting finish. This was such a fun season to watch after nearly two years of waiting, and made me remember why I love this show, and it definitely belongs in the top five. Now at number four, we have the first season in what I consider the golden era of Hell's Kitchen, but to me, it has the most flaws out of the other seasons, and that is Hell's Kitchen Season 7. And yeah, Season 5 to Season 7 is the golden era for the show, as Hell's Kitchen was at its peak with so many crazy moments and chefs, and obviously these three seasons take up three of my top four spots. But Season 7 I feel is the weakest season of this era, but it's obviously still a great season nonetheless. The main problem with this season is that it's so top heavy, as you can pretty much guess the Black Jackets by Episode 4. I mean, there's only so many times I can see Siobhan and Fran go up for elimination. But there's so many great moments this season. You got the first service where the teams finally completed all the tickets, with Ramsey kicking out half the chef to do so. You got Andrew quitting in the middle of service, Salvatore being eliminated despite being on the winning team. And of course, you have one of, if not the most iconic moment in Hell's Kitchen history, with Nelka's complete meltdown and ejection during service, making for just awesome television. Holly as a winner just doesn't do it for me, and honestly the final two of her and Jay just didn't sit right with me after they flirted all season, even though Holly had a son at home. And the cast this season is alright, but there's not really many standout characters, other than maybe Salvatore. I personally love Jason, and Autumn is a rootable underdog, but the rest of the cast is either game body, or messing up dishes left and right, with no other personality traits. So this season did have a ton of great moments, 
and it was exciting to watch throughout. But I just wasn't as attached to this season as much as the seasons above it, so it lands here at 4. The next season we'll be talking about is also part of the Golden Era, and that is Hell's Kitchen Season 5. Again, so many iconic moments this season. You got Seth and Colleen being complete train wrecks for 4 and 5 episodes respectively. You have Jay and Lacey being kicked out in the middle of service in back-to-back -back episodes, just flat out crazy. You have Carol being eliminated at the final 7 despite being on the winning team, the first time this ever happened in the show's history. And the Danny Paula final 2 may just take the cake for the closest final 2 in Hell's Kitchen history. And yes, while it did seem pointless considering Paula and Danny were clearly going to be the final 2, it was fun to see Andrea and Ben completely fall apart at the finish line as they desperately tried to survive until the finale. This season had a perfect amount of good and bad chefs, great one-liners from Ramsay, and all around is just a fantastic season of Hell's Kitchen. Now coming in at number 2, and I'll be honest, this was my number 1 originally, but the more I thought about it, the more I decided that the number 1 season simply had to be number 1. But again, this season is right there with it in my opinion, and that is Hell's Kitchen Season 12. I'll admit I'm a little biased towards this season, since I watched this season after a hiatus from Season 11, but man, this season just delivered each and every week. The first three weeks were amazing, as we got three of the worst services of all time, with basically half the cast being on the chopping block three episodes in. The non-elimination episodes were done right this season, with the one-on-one -on -one Cook for Your Life challenge and the Fight for Black Jacket challenge. We got the iconic episodes of Gabriel's mid-service elimination and the most shocking moment in Hell's Kitchen history, with Joy quitting at the final five. But what makes this season so good to me is the unpredictability. I mentioned how I love season 15 so much more than the rest due to its unpredictability. But this season, you get unpredictability with great characters and shocking moments. Who would have ever thought five episodes in that Gabriel would make it further than Anton? I love that Ramsey gave Richard another shot over Jessica as opposed to using this as a convenient excuse to get rid of the old man. Joy was an obvious winner and threw it all away. And of course, you got Scott the biggest underdog winner in Hell's Kitchen history, winning despite being nominated seven times and appearing to not have a chance to win come Black Jackets. Again, this season is the perfect mix of characters, moments, and it's unpredictable throughout. So it lands here at number two. Now at number one, and again, I just had to put this season at one, as this season is everything great about Hell's Kitchen. The number one season, in my opinion, is Hell's Kitchen season six. This season has literally everything, shocking moments, peak Gordon Ramsay, great chef's character and skill wise, and amazing services. The reason why I originally had season 12 as number one was due to this season being a bit predictable and that Dave and Kevin would be the final two. But I decided it would be ridiculous to knock a season down a spy due to these guys doing the unthinkable, absolutely dominating Hell's Kitchen despite literally breaking bones in their body. So yeah, this season starts off with an absolute bang with Louis' ejection the classic look moment from Ramsey, and Robert getting a second chance. There's so many iconic confrontations, like Tennille going off on Ramsey, Jean-Philippe screaming at Van, and of course the unreal moment of Joseph going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ramsey. You get great character moments such as Robert's downfall, Tennille's comeback story, Van being absolutely hilarious, Amanda being adorable, and more. The season is simply just must-watch Hell's Kitchen, and in my opinion, the best season the show has to offer. So there you have it guys, my ranking of all 19 seasons of Hell's Kitchen. And remember, this is my opinion, it's completely subjective. If you disagree, that's fine, but you don't need to blast me down in the comments. However, what you can do for me is hit that like and subscribe button for more reality TV content such as Hell's Kitchen and Survivor. Follow me on all my socials at Flynn underscore Masters, and spread the word of my channel to all your friends. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.